Good day, grade 12 learners. Welcome to today's business studies lesson. My name is Sidi Sotlaka. This program is funded by the Northern Cape Department of Education, broadcast by Pagama Research and Development. Today, we look into a main topic we call the business venture, which will be assessed in your paper too. And the subtopic we look into is management and leadership. And basically, this is a revision to say, how will the lesson be structured or how will the, the subtopic management and leadership be structured when we are looking into everything now integrated? So learning outcomes, this is what you should understand by the end of this lesson. You should be able to elaborate on the meaning of management and leadership you should further be able to differentiate between management and leadership and also be able to discuss or evaluate the impact of the leadership styles the leadership styles are your democratic autocratic laissez fair together with charismatic and the transactional you should also be able to suggest or recommend situations in which each leadership style can be applied in the workplace and discuss or explain the leadership theories that are there and also explain or discuss the role of personal attitude in successful leadership so that's basically your management and leadership subtopic and this is what you should be able to understand before you can say you are ready for exam maybe looking into the prelim or the final exam remember in management what you covered in your previous grade is your three levels of management which included your top management it also included your middle management and your low level management and you also covered your management tasks we have four management tasks your planning you also covered your organizing together with leading and controlling so those are what you covered in your grade 10 to say management has to plan organize lead and also control and then when you look into the three levels of management basically it is the hierarchy of an organization to say an organization has top manage top management it has middle management and low management and then when you look into management tasks is to look into leading planning controlling and organizing which has to be done by those three levels of management now when we're looking into baseline based on what you covered in your previous grade is the idea that the manager takes tactical decisions you should know which level of manager takes which decision so basically this would be assessed when you are assessing this you focus on this three to say which is the correct one and when we look into the three options a b and c the answer should be middle to say the middle managers take your tactical decisions to see how things can be done so that they prepare for the operational uh, manager who happens to be at the low level of the levels of management so two for that and then terminology that is important for this lesson is the term leadership Leadership refers to the ability of an individual to influence and guide followers, while managers are basically there to ensure the planning, organizing, leading and controlling of employees to achieve the goals of an organization or a business. So that is the terminology that is important for this lesson. Now let's start by looking into defining again what is management and what is leadership. Uh, the meaning of management is the coordination of planning, organizing, leading, controlling employees to achieve the goals that the organization shall have set. An organization has a vision and mission to say this is what we want to achieve. When we're looking into a vision, we want to achieve this after 10 years. So the managers now have to plan, organize, and lead and control employees towards achieving that goal that would be set by the organization hence we say they plan they organize they use tools available to make sure that the organization achieves those results but when we look now into leadership we are looking into an, an individual that has an ability to influence and guide followers towards achieving the goals of the organization hence you see with the picture they are not about controlling they are not about planning but they are about uh, focusing on the employees so that they become motivated and after becoming motivated they believe that the employees would be able to work towards achieving the vision 
of the organization. When we look into the difference between leadership and management, leadership now, uh, leaders are born with the natural uh, leadership skill while managers now or, or, or management becomes a manager becomes a manager because of the position in which he or she is appointed and then when you look into leadership leaders have power because of their knowledge skills and intelligence but managers have power because of the position of authority into which they are appointed and then when you look into motivational now uh, leadership again leaders are motivational in their approach while when you look into management or managers they are instructional in their approach and leaders are more people orientated while managers become task orientated so when you look into both you are able to see that leaders are born with the skill but then managers become a manager because of the position in which they are appointed but again the power of the leader is on their knowledge skills and intelligence but the power of the manager is because of the authority into which they are appointed and then they are motivational in their approach this is your leaders but your managers are instructional to say they give instruction to the followers or employees to do something but the leaders would motivate now your followers to be able to do whatever that has to be done uh, hence we say leaders are people orientated because they care about people's feelings and making sure that people work with a happy smile but when you are looking into management or managers focus on completing the task and they don't care about how the employees are feeling hence we say leaders are people orientated but managers are task orientated the aim is to complete their task according to the managers then we start with the first leadership style we should understand what each leadership style means and also look into situations where each leadership style can be applied now we have democratic leadership style this is a leader that allows employees to participate in the decision making process so that they feel empowered or motivated so leaders who are democratical are leaders who will involve employees in the process of making a decision now situations which the democratic leadership style can be uh, applied in the workplace it can be applied in the workplace when now group members are skilled and waiting to share their ideas it can also be applied when the leader does not have all the information needed to make a decision and employees have the available information to contribute so that is your democratic it allows employees or followers to contribute ideas and is suitable when employees are skilled and are waiting to share their ideas or in a situation whereby the leader does not have all the information needed to make a decision and employees have that valuable information that is when we can apply leadership style when we're talking about application we are saying when can it be used it can be used when the group members are skilled and are eager to share ideas that is when as a leader you can decide to say i'm becoming democratic you read your situation the situation is determined by the workers to say what is the level of competency or level of skills of workers you are having if you're having skilled workers then you can use democratic but if you are not having employees who are not skilled, you cannot consider using democratic because the decisions that may be taken, they might be incorrect. Then as we proceed, we look into the impact, positives and negatives of this leadership style is that the leader allows the employees to participate in decision making so that they feel empowered. And another advantage is that employees use different ideas that can lead to increase of sales. So that is your positives for your democratic leadership style. Hence, we look into the impact. Remember, the word impact would tell you that you are allowed to provide both positives and negatives and the verb that can be followed or that can be used to ask such a question can be your discuss it can be your explain it can be your 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 evaluate so whenever such verbs 
uh, whenever the, the, the examiner decides to use such verbs you should know that you can give the same respond it doesn't matter the verb you just have to know that the impact of which leadership style then you use that to get your answers however when you look into negatives incorrect decisions might be made if employees are inexperienced so they uh, the leader has to be careful when it comes to applying democratic look into the competency level as i said how skilled are your employees before you can apply your democratic because if they are not having the experience incorrect decisions can be made which would be a disadvantage and then another one is that the decision making process would be time consuming because stakeholders have to be consulted meaning employees have to be consulted and their views have to be taken so that a decision can be taken so it is not good in a case whereby the business is in a crisis situation because you have to consult a lot of people and at that time the time that the organization would be having is limited so that becomes a disadvantage so the issue of time here becomes very key because you are busy consulting as the leader instead of making that decision so it is important to read the situation as the leader and decide when to use and make sure that you are using the right leadership style in the right situation then we look into another leadership style which is autocratic auto auto means autonomous from the word autonomous meaning to be alone and to take a decision alone so when you are looking into that leadership style the leader does not allow employees to participate in the uh, decision making process so employees are not allowed to make decisions as you can see on the picture there employees would not be allowed when can the uh, leadership style be used it can be used now it is applicable when all information is available to solve the problem or in an urgent situation after an accident or trying to meet a tight deadline that is when you can use autocratic a leadership style that does not allow employees to participate in decision making why because all information needed to make a decision is available and another one is that in an urgent situation there's no time to consult other people or employees so you use autocratic as a leader then the positives of using this leadership style is that quick decisions can be taken without consulting with employees and then clear guidance can be given to inexperienced or new staff. So that is the advantage. The issue of time here, the leadership style saves time because the leader does not have to consult and there's clear guidance because people are given instruction or employees would be given instruction on how to do their task and complete on time. Then when you look into negatives, workers can become demotivated if their ideas are not considered and new or creative ideas may not be considered. That can be a disadvantage as well. So it makes employees sad because their ideas are not considered and at some point it means their feelings are also not considered. What is the difference between democratic and autocratic leadership style democratic leadership style involves employees in decision making processes that is your democratic employees are involved but autocratic a leader takes all decision alone without involving employees another one is that when we look into democratic it is people orientated as employees feelings and opinions are considered before a decision can be taken because as a leader you are basically not doing all the work you are giving people a task to do and then you have to make sure that they feel good about the task and you have to also involve them in the process of deciding on how the task will be done hence we say democratic leaders now are considering employees feelings and their opinions because employees feelings and opinions are from the idea that they are the ones who will be doing the task so it is important to consult them but when we look into autocratic it is task orientated as opinions of employees are not considered so the leader only focuses on uh, making the the giving the task and instructions on how to do it and then when we look into when it can be useful uh, democratic is useful 
when leaders depend on the inputs of the experienced followers and when you are looking into autocratic it is useful in a crisis or agent situation because you just the leader would have to make a decision alone without consulting the followers then lies as fair Let's define what is lies as fair. Lies, the word lies means to allow someone to do something. So that leadership style has to do with the leader allowing the followers to do a task without even informing them to say, how should you complete the task as employees? So a leader allows employees to make decisions on their own work method and on how they are going to complete the task. So that is your lies fair. It can be applied when you are having experts in your organization. Experts are people who have uh, more knowledge and experience in whatever they do. So situations in which leadership, the, the lies fair leadership style can be applied in the workplace. This leadership style can be applied when employees are experts and can take responsibility for their actions. And another one is that this leader is very busy and delegation of tasks will increase productivity. So it can be applied when and now your employees are experts and can take responsibility for their action. Experts meaning more knowledge so they are able to complete their task and take responsibility if anything goes wrong. And another one is that it is applicable or it is used when the leader is very busy and delegation of tasks will increase the productivity of the organization. When we look into positives now, the advantage with Lysos is that employees have maximum freedom and can work in that independently. Remember, this is a leadership style that allows employees to make decisions on their own work method and on how they're going to complete their task. That basically contributes to the maximum freedom and working independently. And then the leader motivates workers by trusting them to do things on their own. So it creates a culture of developing other leaders because employees would be given trust to say they can do the work without being closely monitored. However, the negatives are uh, the negatives becomes the idea that for some employees, lack of clear direction might be demotivating. So lack of clear direction may be demotivating so to, to, to some employees and workers are expected to solve their own conflict situation. That can be another challenge when it, it comes to applying Liza's fair because the leader is not there to monitor. Then we also have charismatic this is a leader that uses charm to influence his team to achieve the business goals and the leader that would show employees how to do something. A leader that we would normally consider using the term to say leaders lead by example. Those are leaders that are charismatic because they would show you how to do it before you can start doing it on your own. Situations in which the charismatic leadership style can be applied in the workplace. This leadership style can be applied when the leader is an excellent at selling the vision and achieving excellent results. So when they want to sell the vision and achieve excellent results, they can use charismatic. And then when they want to motivate the employees and what would make them to be more motivated is that the leader is energetic. So when they want to motivate employees, they can use charismatic. Now positives. Positives of this leadership style is that the leader is an expert at selling a vision and will be able to achieve excellent results and employees are motivated as the leader is energetic. So that becomes an, a, a, a positive for applying the charismatic leadership style. However, the negatives are the idea that leaders believe more in themselves than in the team and the projects can collapse if the leader leaves the team so that becomes a disadvantage because they are very skilled in a way that employees now would feel that the team is not functional when the leader is no longer there then we look into the transactional leadership style now this is a leadership style whereby the leader uses a system of reward and punishment to motivate his or her workers to work hard and then when we are looking into situations when the transactional leadership style can be applied. This leadership style can be applied when the leader wants to maximize 
the employee's performance and when deadlines have to be met in a short notice. So what basically happens is that employees would be given reward if they perform very well or complete a task before others and then they would be punished again if they fail to achieve the target or complete the task. Hence, we say it is a system of reward and punishment to motivate the employees. It is used when employees are demotivated. It is used when the leader wants to maximize employees' performance. It is used when deadline has to be met in short notice or when employees are under pressure. And again, it can be used when workers have low morale. Now, let us look into positives of this leadership style. It improves employees' productivity and morale. It means employees enjoy the working environment since there are rewards to be granted to them if they do well. And then employees know what is expected of them. That is also another advantage. And then when we look into the negatives is that employees may lose creativity as they have to follow rules and procedures and managing employees might be time consuming because when we are looking into this aspect of transactional money uh, workers have to be managed to say are they doing the tasks according to rules and procedures because the rules are given to say this is how you're supposed to do the work however whoever who gets to complete the work first would be rewarded with a bonus would be rewarded with a free lunch would be rewarded with a holiday trip would be rewarded with petrol for the month so those are the reward systems that can be offered to the different employees now we move into an issue of leadership theories we have three leadership theories that we deal with we have situational leadership theory we also have transformational leadership theory and leaders and followers these are theories on how leaders can become effective at what they do they guide and inform leaders on how they should do their leadership now situational leadership theory this is a leadership style that focuses on this is a leadership theory that looks into different uh, characteristics are needed it talks about the idea that the leader cannot just apply one leadership style because situations differ and different environments would come with their different challenges hence it says different leadership characteristics are needed for different situation the issue is to say what determines the situation because as a leader you are a component that is dependent so much on your employees so employees would determine the situation what what characters in your employees would determine the the, the situation it be their skills level their morale and their character that would de determine the situation for the employee then for the leader the situation dictates the leadership style that should be applied so leaders must be flexible and adaptable if employees are skilled it means you should use a particular leadership style you would consider democratic if they have low morale you use transactional to offer rewards if they are uh, experienced and well-skilled and show a character of taking responsibility. You use Lysa's fair. So those are situations that determine the leadership style that has to be applied. Hence, they say the situation dictates the leadership style that should be applied. So leaders must be flexible and adaptable to their employees and whatever task they shall be giving to them and also whatever situations they meet. Then another one is that the success of this theory depends on the kind of relationship that exists between the leader and the follower. If the leader understands their employees' characters, morale and characteristics, they'll be able to uh, achieve success. And then relationships between leaders and employees should be based on mutual trust. So that is your uh, situational leadership theory. And as we said, if employees maybe have now low morale, you use what transactional leadership style to say, how can I improve this morale to become better? Then we look into transformational leadership theory. Transformational leadership theory now is suitable for dynamic now environments where change could be drastic. So this is for leaders who want to forever change things in the organization. 
the personality of the leader should inspire the followers to change their motivation towards working towards a common goal and then strategic thinking leaders should develop a long-term vision for the organization and sell it to the employees bit by bit you cannot sell a 10 a 10 years plan or vision to the employees in a day you need to do it day by day objectives by objectives in order for them employees to buy into the vision of the organization so the personality becomes key hence our second bullet emphasizes that the personality of the leader should inspire the followers to change their motivation towards waking to that that common goal and then another one is that they need to be very good at motivating employees to achieve results this talks about the relationship between the leader and the follower the leader must lead by example and reward positive behavior of the employees now what is expected from the uh, follower the follower should listen to what is expected of them and they should be willing to work as a team and another one is that followers must easily accept responsibility when something does not work out so that they can improve and learn and become better and then another one is that the leader must motivate employees to diverse or come up with alternative strategies to achieve business what goal so as you look into the first point talks about what should the leader or how should the leader relate to their follower they should lead by example and reward positive behavior and and then when you look into the second one it talks about how should the follower behave the follower should listen to what is expected of them and they should be willing to work as a team another one is that the follower should accept easily uh, they should easily accept uh, responsibility when something does not work out and then another one now looking into the leader to say the leader should motivate employees to come up or de devise alternative strategies to achieve the business goal so this is about the relationship between the leader and the follower it's a theory that guides us on that matter and then when we look into the role of personal attitude and successful in successful leadership it emphasizes the idea that as the leader your personality now is key to achieve success for the organization and be able to motivate your employees how it, it emphasizes that positive attitude will release a leadership potential another one is that a leader's good attitude will influence the success of their business however it also says a leader's now bad attitude can influence the failure of the business and then leaders with a positive attitude know that there is always more to learn or a space to grow and then another one is that the leaders uh, good leaders will stay with the task regardless of the difficulties or challenges that they face so that is your role of personal attitude and successful leadership and to say a leader's good attitude will influence the success but a leader's, a leader's bad attitude will lead to the failure of the organization because the attitude is what the leader should portray every day and the smile is key even in difficult situations the leader should portray a smile and then a summary of our lesson we looked into the meaning of management and leadership we also looked into differentiating between management and leadership and also looked into evaluating the impact of your democratic of your autocratic of your lysosphere of free reign charismatic and transactional and remember we also recommended situations where each leadership style can be applied just to sum up your democratic can be applied when employees now are eager to share ideas are eager to share ideas and when they are skilled and then autocratic is used in a crisis situation and then a lysosphere it is used when the leader is very busy charismatic is used to motivate the followers as the leader as the leader is energetic then transactional is applied when you want to reward or improve or make sure that it is applied when workers morale is low
So those are situations. <clears throat> discuss, we also discussed the leadership theories and also identified and or explained the role of personal attitude in successful leadership. That is what we looked into for this revision lesson. So this is an integrated lesson that covered everything under leadership and management because remember the first part focused on these aspects and also looked into this, but this is integrated. So remember to wear a mask, sanitize, keep your social distancing, keep well, goodbye.